Hello! My birthday was September 2nd, so to celebrate, I've decided to upload episodes from my mindfulness podcast series, Reading with Carrie, every day through the month of September. Once we hit October, I'll be posting the episodes every Friday with the bonus minisodes on Saturday. To catch the episodes as they air every Wednesday, you can subscribe to my podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcasts. Click the link in the description below to go directly to my podcast's website. Hope you enjoy! Hello and welcome to Reading with Carrie, a mindfulness podcast series that can be used as a sleep aid or to ease your anxiety and relieve your stress. I am your host, Carrie Favel, and I am so thankful that you've decided to spend some time with me. So once again, I must admit that I am borrowing my own previous work for this podcast. As I mentioned in a previous episode, I wanted to have a playlist available upon the premiere so you would have a chance to listen to multiple stories and get comfortable with the format. It's good for me too. This is one of my older readings, but I still think it's good and I hope you will agree. If you enjoy this, please rate this podcast on whatever uh, listening platform you're on. And if you have any comments or suggestions, you can always email me at readingwithcarrie at gmail.com. This is the one item five senses exercise. For this, you will need an object. It can be a pencil or your phone. A piece of food may be the easiest to go through all the five senses. However, if that is a trigger for you, or if you are intermittent fasting, using a food item is not at all required. Just pick an item that is closest to you. A pillow if you're on the bed. Now first we are going to start with a brief breathing exercise. Close your eyes and breathe deeply with pauses once you fully inhale and a pause after you fully exhale. Center yourself on the here and now. Focus on the breath passing through the heart. Place your feet on the floor or whatever surface you're sitting on and feel them. Feel grounded. Sink deeper into the chair or the bed or the floor. Relax your shoulders as you breathe in deeply and naturally and exhale. Now open your eyes and pick up your object a pen, an orange, whatever you have available. Pay attention and look at it. Really describe it to yourself. What color is it? What's the hue? Is it pastel? Is it deep? Is it rich? What's the texture like? Are there dimples? Is it rough and coarse? Is there moisture or is it hard and smooth? Truly focus on this object. Feel the texture with your fingers. Feel every part if you can. Consider the coloring and now sniff it. Does it have a scent? Is it sweet? Is it sour? If it's a pen, maybe it smells like your sweat. Or perhaps it smells like linen, fresh laundry. Maybe it doesn't have a smell. What does the room smell like that you're in right now? Sometimes the item can create a sound. Tap gently on it with your fingertips. Pretend
pretend you're in an ASMR video and try to make noise with it. If it's a pen or a pencil, maybe lightly draw with it. Just focus on the sound that it makes. You don't have to write a word. Now, if you can, let the taste hit your tongue. If you can eat it, if it's food, go ahead and bite into it and let the flavor dance on your tongue. If you don't have a food item, you can also taste the air if there's nothing around. Stick your tongue out really wide and wag it in the air or breathe in deeply. Can you taste anything on the air? If it's not food and you think it's hygienic enough, you could lick the item if you'd like. Might be a little silly. Just imagine what it would taste like if you could. If it's a pencil, imagine what the wood would feel like against your teeth. Or the ink, if it's a pen, would probably taste a bit sour. Again, you don't have to lick your phone. Remember to be safe and healthy. Just imagine it if you can't eat it. Just take a few more minutes. When you're doing this exercise on your own, you should take maybe five minutes, eight minutes, probably no more than 10 minutes. It shouldn't take that long. Just focus on the feeling, the touching, what it looks like, what it smells like, and if possible, what it tastes like, or what you imagine it would taste like. Really focus. Okay. Did you go through all the senses with me? That I think we've done it. Congratulations. If you would like, let's take a nice, slow sigh. And now here's the story. Beauty and the Beast by Madame la Prince de Beaumont Once there was a very rich trader who had three sons and three daughters. All the girls were beautiful, but the loveliest one of all was the youngest. She was named Beauty, and this made her sisters very jealous. They hated her kind ways and fair face. They only liked rich, silly people and parties. They laughed at Beauty, who liked to read and help at home. Suddenly, misfortune came to the trader, and he lost all his money in business. He had nothing left but a small farm. We'll have to live in the country, he said, and work the farm. If we're good farmers, we'll have plenty to eat at least. On the farm, the man and his sons worked in the fields. Beauty got up each day at dawn. She cleaned the house and got breakfast ready. It was hard at first, for she was not used to work, but soon she became capable and strong. Her sisters sat around all day moping and doing nothing, just to see beauty work made them cross. When they had lived for a year on the farm, good news came for the trader. One of his ships, laden with cargo, had come safely to port. He made ready to go to the city to see about it. The older girls hoped to be rich again, and they asked their father to bring them lots of new clothes. What would you like? The trader asked beauty. Perhaps you'll bring me a rose, said beauty. I can't seem to grow them here. In town, the father used most of the money from the ship's goods to pay old debts. He started home as poor as when he'd left. Halfway home, he rode into a deep forest and lost his way. It began to snow thick and fast. The wind raged. Night had fallen and the wolves were howling all around. The merchant didn't know where to turn. Suddenly, he saw lights shining among the trees. A castle, brightly lit, lay inside a wide park. Thankfully, the trader hurried to the gate. The courtyard was empty. He stabled his horse and went in the open door of the castle. Inside, he saw a friendly fire. A table was set for one with good food in plenty. He went to the fire thinking, The owner will surely pardon me for taking refuge here. I hope he comes in soon. He waited for hours. No one came. He was so hungry that at last he sat down and ate. Then he walked through the other rooms. They were all beautiful and well-kept. 
but he saw no one. When he came to a bedroom, he was so tired, he went to bed. He woke late next morning. He blinked in surprise, for a fine new suit lay in place of the damp old one he'd worn the day before. A kind fairy must own this castle, he thought. He looked out the window. The snow was gone and the masses of flowers brightened in the sun. He turned back to his room and saw a tray laden with buttered rolls and a pot of chocolate. Kind fairy, he said aloud. You're most thoughtful, thank you. He had a good breakfast. Outside he found his horse already saddled, and he set out for home. As he rode under a trellis heavy with roses, he thought of Beauty's wish and picked a rose for her. Just then there was a terrible roar, and a monstrous beast rush up. I saved your life, and you show your thanks by stealing my precious roses. You'll die for this. Say your prayers, for in ten minutes I'll kill you. Majesty, forgive me, begged the traitor. I took the rose for one of my daughters. She asked me to bring her one. My name is not Majesty, roared the creature. My name is Beast. I hate flattery. You say you have daughters. Go home to them. Ask if one of them will die instead of you. If they refuse, you must return yourself in three months. The traitor had no idea of letting his girls die for him. He thought, I'll go and say farewell to my family. He swore to return in three months. Beast said, You may go. You may leave now. I'll send you a trunk full of gold when you get home. What a strange beast, thought the traitor. He's cruel and kind at the same time. He left the castle. His horse seemed to know the right road of his own accord, and soon the traitor was home. The sight of his children waiting for him made him weep. He gave Beauty the rose, saying, I paid a high price for this. Then he told his story. The older girls howled and scolded Beauty. Why couldn't you be satisfied with new clothes like us? You had to be special. You've cost us our father's life, and you don't even cry for it. Why cry? said Beauty quietly. Father won't die. Beast said I might take his place, and I shall, gladly. No, said her brothers. We'll go after this monster. If we can't kill him, we'll die fighting. Beast has magic powers we can't fight, said the father. Beauty means well, but I shan't let her go. I'm old. I'll soon die anyway. I only regret leaving you all, my dears. But Beauty stood firm. Father, I must go, she said. I'd sooner let Beast kill me than die of grief over causing your death. Finally, Beauty had her way. Her sisters were secretly glad to be rid of her. When the traitor went to his room, he found a trunk full of gold on his bed. Beast hadn't forgotten. He called Beauty and showed her the gold. Good, she said. Two gentlemen want to marry my sisters. This gold can be their wedding present. Her kind heart never held grudges. Beauty and her father left the next day. Her brothers wept. Her sisters rubbed their eyes with onions and wept too. The horse found the way to the castle by himself, and the trader led Beauty in. There was a table set for two, with gold plates and crystal glasses and fine food. They sat down to dinner. Beauty tried to be calm. She thought, Beast wants me to fatten up, so I'll taste good when he eats me. After dinner, Beast came in with a loud roar. Beauty was afraid, but she tried to hide her fears. Did you come here willingly? asked Beast. Yes, Beauty said in a small voice. You are good. I am grateful to you, said Beast. Sir, he said to her father, leave here tomorrow. Don't come back. Now, good night, Beauty. Good night, Beast, she said. Beast left, and Beauty and her father went to their rooms to sleep. While she slept, Beauty dreamed of a lady who said, Beauty, your good heart will bring you great rewards. Next day, she told her father her dream. It made him feel better. Even so, he was sad as he left her. Beauty thought bravely, I can do nothing to help myself now, so I shan't worry. I'll be happy while I can. Beast probably won't eat me until tonight, so I have all day to explore. She wandered over the castle. Each room was more lovely than the next. At last, she came to a paneled door, on which was a sign that said, Beauty's Apartment. Shyly, she opened the door. She saw the room of her dreams. It was lined with shelves of books. There was a grand piano and many books of music. Why does Beast take such pains to please me if he's going to eat me tonight? She wondered. On the table was a golden placard that said, Beauty rules here. Beauty's wish is our command. My wish, sighed Beauty. My wish is to know what father is doing now. She glanced up. A mirror on the wall shone with a clear reflection of the inside of her home. Her father looked very sad. The image left the mirror as fast as it had come.
How kind Beast is, thought Beauty. I'm not so afraid of him now. That night, as she sat at supper, she heard Beast coming. Beauty, he said. May I watch you have supper? Your master here, she answered. No, said Beast. In this house, your wish is law. Tell me, do you find me very ugly? Yes, said Beauty. I can't lie, but I believe you are also very good. Yes, said Beast. But I'm still an ugly, stupid beast. Not stupid, smiled Beauty. Stupid folk don't know they're stupid. Eat your supper, said Beast. This castle is yours. Try to be happy in it. Your kindness makes me forget you're ugly, said Beauty. Many men are more truly beasts than you. A good heart and an ugly face are better than a fair face and a rotten heart. I'm too stupid to thank you nicely, Beast growled. But I am grateful for your good opinion. Beauty had almost forgotten to be afraid of the monster when he said, Beauty, will you marry me? Beauty was silent. At last she said, honestly and simply, No, Beast. Beast gave a mighty sigh. <sighs> good night, Beauty, he said and left. Three quiet months passed. Each night, Beast came while Beauty had supper. Each day he proved his kindness. Beauty lacked for nothing. The only sad moment came at night when Beast said, Will you marry me? And Beauty refused. One night she added, You'll always be dear to me, Beast. I'm truly your friend, but I don't think I shall ever be able to marry you. You are my only joy, said Beast. I'd die without you. Promise, at least, that you'll never leave. Beauty blushed, for that day her mirror had shown her her father, lying ill. She had been longing to go and comfort him. I promise never to leave you for good, she said, but I long to see my father. I'll die if I can't go to him. I can't let you suffer, said Beast. You may go home. You'll stay there, and I'll die of grief. No, said Beauty. We are friends. I promise I'll be back. The mirror tells me that my sisters are married. My brothers are in the army. Father's alone. Give me a week with him. You'll wake at home tomorrow, said Beast. When you want to come back here, just put your ring on the table as you go to bed. Good night, Beauty. And Beast sighed, an even mightier sigh than usual. Beauty awoke next day in her own home. A gold and diamond gown lay ready to wear. She put it on, inwardly thanking Beast for his kindness, and went downstairs. Her father hugged her and laughed and cried for joy all at the same time. Servants were sent to tell her sisters that Beauty had returned. They came, hoping for the worst. They were sorely disappointed. Beauty, dressed like a queen, was lovely as the day star. The two jealous sisters went off, gossiping. Did you see that little snip in her gold gown? We'll have to spoil her game, whined one. Suppose we keep her here more than a week. She'd break her promise to Beast. Then maybe he'd eat her at last, said the other. What a good idea, said the first one. We'll have to be very sweet to her. The sisters were so sweet and loving to her that Beauty cried for joy. When the week was up, the sisters stormed and wept. They made such a show of sadness that Beauty said she'd stay another week. On the tenth night, Beauty dreamed. She thought she saw Beast lying on the grass, dying of despair. She woke up regretting her cruelty. He can't help being ugly, she thought. He's good, and that is worth more than anything. I'm sorry I've hurt him. She put her ring on the table and went to sleep. Next morning, she was in Beast's castle again. She put on his favorite dress to please him and waited impatiently for the evening. At last it was supper time, time for Beast to appear. But he did not come. What if I've killed him, thought Beauty. She looked everywhere for Beast. Then she ran into the garden, remembering her dream. There lay Beast, quite still. Beauty bent over him, quite forgetting his ugliness. His heart still beat faintly. She ran for water and dashed it on him. Beast opened his eyes. He whispered, I couldn't live without you. I'll die happy now that you're here. No, Beast, you mustn't die. Live and let me be your wife. I thought we were only friends, but I couldn't bear to lose you. I love you, Beast. At Beauty's words, the castle sprang into light. Fireworks and music filled the air. Beast disappeared, and in his place stood a handsome prince. But where is Beast? cried Beauty. I am he, said the prince. I was enchanted by a powerful witch and became a monstrous beast. I had to stay that way until a beautiful girl should love me and love me for my goodness alone. In all the world, only you could help me, for only you are so good that kindness is enough to win your love. I beg you to be my queen. Beauty gave the prince her hand, and he led her into the castle. There, to Beauty's joy, she found all her family. 
The Lady Beauty had dreamed of her first night in the castle had brought them there. Beauty, said the lady, who was an important fairy, come into the rewards of your virtue. You preferred goodness to looks and wit. So you will find looks, wit, and goodness all in one person who loves you. You ought to be a great queen. Then she turned to Beauty's sisters. As for you, you'll be stone statues at the door of your sister's palace. Your only punishment will be to see your sister's happiness. Your enchantment will end the day you realize your wickedness and grow kind. But I fear that day may never come. The fairy waved her wand. They were all transported to the prince's true kingdom, where his people acclaimed him with joy. He and Beauty were married. They lived long and happily. Their joy was great, for it grew out of great goodness. The End Once again, there are quite a few differences from the well-known Disney version. The evil sisters were a bit unnecessary, in my opinion, but I guess there needed to be an obstacle. I think the addition of Gaston by Disney made the story a bit stronger in that aspect. It also really bothers me that Beauty was fine with the curse on her sisters becoming statues. The blatant moral of goodness is pushed on us, yet she can't forgive them and beg they be spared. I suppose these fairy tales are all about consequences for one's actions, so there simply was no saving them. The repetition of calling the beast ugly is really funny to me. I know it was to help paint the picture for the listener, but it's a bit rude that Beauty was so blatant saying, ew, you're ugly. But of course, the strong lesson to love what's on the inside and not vanity is the real takeaway. To be visually beautiful is superficial. Their joy grew out of goodness, and I think in our own lives, we should try to attain the same. Doing good is its own reward. Our closing thought will be from Winston Churchill, who said, We make a living by what we get, but we make a life by what we give. Thank you for listening. I welcome you back anytime you may need to hear a comforting voice or familiar bedtime story. Title, Beauty and the Beast. Author, Madame Le Prince de Beaumont. Version, The Golden Book of Fairy Tales. Translated by Marie Ponsot and illustrated by Adrienne Segur.